Well, hello there, friends, and welcome back to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to continue on with the three-in-one hand warmers. This is video three of a three-part series, and I am thrilled to move on to the next step. Now, if you have not started yet, it is not too late. Simply download that free pattern. I've put a link in the video description box right down there below. Then go back and watch video one and two. And once that homework is complete, you'll be ready to start this video and you'll be on your way to making some fantastic hand warmers. For everybody else who has completed the homework and is ready for this next step, let's take a look at the pattern because I feel like you're probably further than where we were when we left off at video two, which is perfectly fine. At the end of video two, I left you with your hand warmer right about at that point. You had finished the hand and you had all of your thumb gusset stitches done and you were ready to carry on with the pattern. You at that point had to decide if you were gonna do a fingerless mitt, a convertible mitt, or a full on mitten. The only difference between these is your stopping point. For the fingerless mittens and the convertible mittens, the stopping point is exactly the same. For the hand warmer, or not the hand warmer, for the mitten, obviously you carry on for the full length of the mitten itself. And you just essentially wanna make sure you make it to the full length of your fingers. And then you work the decreases, really simple decreases. There's really nothing extra that I think you need to know how to do there. They're pretty self-explanatory. And with the, the fact that you've done all of these stitches, you absolutely should know how to do these uh, decrease stitches up here. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on those. What I want to focus on really is the convertible mitten. How do we go from a fingerless mitten like this to a convertible mitten like this? So the ultimate question is, how do I get that flip top right there? Well, we could create the flip top separately and then seam it on. That is one way we could go about it. But the way I wrote the pattern is that we are going to add some surface surface <laughs> slip stitches right along what would be the top of your mitt. So if you were working the left hand, it would be the top of the mitt there. If this were flipped around and I was here, the top of this would be worked over here on this side. Does that make sense? So this is the only time when right and left really matter in this pattern, because it doesn't really matter with these two, they work the same whether on the right hand or the left hand. It's with this one that things get a little bit tricky because we have to make sure that this flap is on the right portion of the hand. So what we will do, and this is written in the pattern, essentially we're going to do some surface single or surface slip stitches along the top of the hand, depending on which hand you are working with, whether it's the left one or the right one, that depends where those stitches go. Once we get those stitches in place, we will then go back and work single crochets into those stitches. And then I wrote the pattern to do foundation single crochets across this part of the mitten, which essentially is the flap that goes over your fingerless mitt, okay? So I wrote these as uh, foundation single crochets. If you wanted to do these as full on chains and then work single crochets into them, you could do that. I will totally leave that up to you. What I wanna focus on in this video is really two things. We're gonna do the surface slip stitches. I'm gonna show you how to work into those surface slip stitches and how to do the foundation chains, uh, the foundation uh, single crochets. The reason I wanna focus on those, those are the two things that are new. Everything else you know how to do. You know how to jump into pattern then and just continue on in your pattern. You know how to make this part of the mitten as if it you know, was the top of your hand. It's just the same as this part, right? It's just that we have a little extra bit worked in. So it's the same there. It's gonna be the same finishing at the top. This part here, right here, that's the only part that is different. So let's go ahead, let's grab this pair of fingerless mitts right here. So this is like, I finished some fingerless mitts. I went ahead and finished off my thumb on these. So maybe I'm gonna make these as a convertible, but I'm gonna leave the thumb like this. I, I mean, I could do whatever I want. So I'm gonna look at these and let's say that they are for my left hand. So I go over here, I look at my instructions and it says that I'm going to place my surface crochet slip stitches in the second round after the thumb gusset, 
placement is across 14 stitches at the start of the round for the right hand, 14 stitches at the end of the round for the left hand, and then fasten off the slip stitches. Well, I'm gonna use a different color so that you guys can see how this works up in the video. Uh, for you, obviously, you wanna use your um, uh, color A, I think. I think it doesn't really matter because they kind of get hidden, hidden. So I'm gonna do this and if you don't want to really count 14 stitches, here's the deal. We can have the flap attach anywhere we want. I just had to pick a point so that way there was written in the pattern, right? So I could pick this point right here. I could pick this point right here. I could pick whatever point I want. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to pick a point. And what you'll notice is I had it work across 14 stitches. So right here, I had it go up here. There's my thumb and the dark is the right hand, the light is the left hand, so I know that if I rest my left hand on this, I want my flap across these, right? I don't want it in this side, I want it this side. So that's your first thing, you can check that. Okay. I could just start right here. I could just stick my, my, my um, hook in, a yarn over, pull up a loop, and then I go over to the next stitch, stick my hook in, and then I'm still working like in the back here, I yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through. So now I have one surface slip stitch complete. And I would do that until I get a total of 14. Now I will tell you right now, I actually don't like the placement of my first one right here and I'm gonna tell you why. If I place my first one there and I have my flap start to where that's the join in, it's never gonna fully look right as it flips over. I like to have my flap join a little bit more over here along the side of my work. So if this were mine, I would rip that out and I would start over here and I would come right there, which is actually where the pattern tells me to start. All right, so I wanted to point that out right there and now I go into this one and here we go. So this is where I start going around. Now I am going into the stitches just like I went into the stitches like the waistcoat. You could go around the stitches. You could do whatever you want. The point here is that we're establishing some stitches here that we can then work into. All right. Does that make sense? So I would get 14 stitches. I essentially you guys are doing this sort of like as a recipe. I essentially want to create stitches from this point, from the center of my thumb over here, to the side over here. Once I get those on there, I will go ahead and fasten off, and that's where I move on to the next step. Whether you're working the right hand or the left hand, it changes up a little bit how you start, but let's get to that point now. I've worked surface slip stitches from the middle of my thumb along the edge of my hand warmer at this point and the edge of my hand warmer over here at this point, okay? Because I'm working on the left thumb, the instructions say, again, I'm gonna change colors so you can see how this works, but we're gonna start off with foundation single crochets. And this is the part I was saying at the beginning, if you wanted to start off with chains, you could, but we're gonna do foundation single crochet. So I'm gonna have you chain two, and then go into the first chain you completed, yarn over, pull up a loop, and stop. So I have two loops on my hook. Now I'm gonna yarn over and draw through one. That one loop right there now represents a chain, all right? So that's the stitch I will be going into when I complete the next one. Now I have two loops on my hook, so I yarn over and draw through two. That represents my single crochet. So I go into the one that I said represented the chain. I go into that stitch, that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through one, so that's my next chain, yarn over, draw through two. Go into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through one, yarn over, draw through two. Go into that chain. That's the one that is a result of my yarn over, draw through one. Yarn over, draw through two. So you would do this until you have a total of 14 foundation single crochets, all right? Once you've completed all 14 foundation single crochet, that's when you bring in your hand warmer. 
and working across these surface slip stitches, you're going to single crochet. It's gonna get us um, an established row to begin working our uh, split single crochets again. So as you're working across this row, make sure you are not making those stitches super tight or you will never get into them. By this point in the project, you know what I mean by that, right? So you would do this all across all of these surface slip stitches you created, and then you will be back to your original stitch count of 28 stitches, okay? So you'd work across all of them, and then by the time you get to the end, you're back over here. Then you begin working around just like before, and you would continue on working the color work just like you did before. It's pretty easy at that point, right? Because you can see right here, we used color A to work through all of those slip stitches. And then you can see that's where we jumped in to our stitch pattern once again. And you just work the stitch pattern like you did before and you go all the way up to the top. That's where you complete with those decreases only with color A, so it makes it very easy. You do the same thing if you were just to make the mitten top, it's the exact same type of finish. And that's it. That's how you make the convertible mitten tops. You see how easy that is? I mean, that's so easy. Knowing that, you now know that you can take any fingerless mitten pattern and turn it into a convertible mitten pattern, right? It's pretty easy stuff. Now, when it comes to the thumb, we left the thumb with a bunch of stitches unworked. So it's time to go back and work stitches around the thumb. So it is pretty darn easy, whether you're doing a full thumb like this, or if you are making a, just a little nubbin of a, of a thumb for the fingerless mitts, it's fairly easy. Let's take a look at a thumb and see how this works up. So I have all of my stitches out here ready to be worked. And the instructions indicate that you are supposed to join with a slip stitch to your marked stitch that was up here where your chains were. And then you would single crochet around the thumb. Now I'm gonna tell you, you can just work one round of single crochets, but if you wanna really maintain this pattern, Instead of single crochets, you could do the split single crochets just like we did all along, and you would be able to maintain the same pattern, okay? So you would do split single crochets all the way around. By the time you worked around all eight stitches that you had skipped before, and two stitches right here on the body of your, of your hand warmer, you now have all your stitches in play and you work the thumb until it measures about two and a half inches and then you work the same decreases you do for the top of the mitten. So it is really quite easy. So whether you start with a stitch right here in this point or if you start with single crochets here or you start with your split single crochets here, it doesn't really matter. So let's just assume we're gonna start here and let's just assume we're gonna start with just regular single crochets. So the first thing I would do is join with color A with a slip stitch. Yes, I'm using a different color just so you can see. And then it says that you would just single crochet, right? We're just gonna single crochet around all of the stitches that we had skipped, and then essentially two stitches that are attached to the hand, which represent the two chains that we did after we skipped, or at the same time we skipped all these stitches, so that way we can get all 10 stitches for the thumb. Once you get all the single crochets completed around, we're going to start working in a spiral again. So just like before, instead of joining with a slip stitch right up here to the top, you're gonna jump into your split single crochet and you will do that around working into all of those single crochets. So if you made them tight like I did, you'll have to go back and redo that. But you get the you get the idea, right? So you just work around around. Now it will look a little bit different if you do those single crochets the way it's written. Um, I just, I didn't want people to get confused trying to get into those split single crochets, but I will let you know if you work into those single crochets there with as a split single crochet instead of a regular single crochet, it looks a little bit more seamless for your thumb. But that's it guys, that's really how easy it is. Work the thumb until it measures two inches, two and a half inches, whatever you want it to measure, and then finish off just like you do the top of the mitten. Now your hand warmers are complete. The only thing left to do is to weave in your tails and call them done.
I really hope you have enjoyed this series and you can take the knowledge you learned in all three of these videos and apply it to future hand warmer projects. Now hopefully you understand what it means by doing a gusset thumb and you understand how you can add a flip top to any fingerless mitten pattern you wish. And then now you know how to read a chart, do some color work, and how to do some split single crochets or the waistcoat stitch. It's a lot of fun to work on a project like this with all of you, so I thank you for joining me. If you want more projects just like this one, make sure you have hit subscribe to the Marley Bird YouTube channel and smash that like button, everybody. When you finish your hand warmers, be sure to share with me on social media. Use hashtag Marley Bird so that way I can find your project and give it some love. That's it for me, everybody. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.